Increases in glucocorticoids are sufficient but not necessary to increase cooperative burrowing in Damaraland mole rats. Okay, that that is of some interest to some of us, um, maybe not to, to many people, uh, glucocorticoids being um, corticoid steroid hormones that are involved in things like uh, reducing inflammation and are understood to be part of a generalized st- stress response. Uh, cooperative burrowing in these mole rats uh, that are different from naked mole rats, but also do a lot of cooperative behavior. Uh, these, these authors went in interested to look for this this mechanism, this hormonal mechanism, to see if it was causal in prompting this behavior. And that's a pretty standard approach in, um, you know, that you would find in a journal like this, Hormones and Behavior, like, you know, a behavioral endocrinology, uh, animal behavior that's trying to get at mechanism as opposed to sticking to uh, observations of the behavior themsel- itself, will tend to go and look and find yay or nay. Like yes, this when when we increased or when uh, we saw that it was increasing natively, uh, when it increased, we saw increases in this behavior, or we did not. Uh, what these authors do, and they put it right up front in the title, which struck me as important for us to just flag, was that they found that yes, in this case, glu- uh, when increase when glucocorticoids, excuse me, are increased uh, experimentally. In these mole rats, they do find an increase in cooperative burrowing, but while sufficient, while an increase in this hormone is sufficient to prompt a change in behavior, it is not necessary to do so. And we usually in science talk about things being necessary um, but not sufficient, and this here is sufficient but not necessary, which may well be a much more common thing. And I thought that was that was worth just spending a couple minutes on. Yeah, it it absolutely is. Um, I used to, and I don't recall, but I suspect you used to also do a module on necessary and sufficient, and uh, in our teaching, you mean in our teaching, yeah. right? And so, you know, there are things which are necessary and sufficient. There are things which are necessary but not sufficient, and there are things which are sufficient but not necessary. And just simply having those categories so that you, this is like one of the basic building blocks of understanding a complex system. Um, And I- So uh, an egg is necessary but not sufficient uh, to produce a a human embryo. mm -hmm. Right. For instance. So- I, I want to point to one of the reasons that this is such a useful rubric to to walk into complex systems with. And it has to do actually with, you know, let's talk for a second about what a hormone is, mm-hmm. right? A hor- hormone is a chemical message that is released in one part of the body that has effects remotely, right? So it functions mechanistically very much like a neurotransmitter, but a neurotransmitter is uh, crossing a very tiny distance in a synapse, for example, whereas a hormone may cross your entire body. It gets dumped into the blood, transmitted around. And it also has um, a kind of generality to it. So to the extent that uh, your being frightened should uh, turn down certain systems that are not priorities and turn up other systems, you can mm-hmm. dump the frightened hormone into the blood and it can trigger all the things in the direction that they should go, right? Because they can just all have the receptor and they know whether that receptor is a, hey, time to wake up and get moving or time to sideline this activity and prioritize other things message. But sometimes that signal comes after the frightening impetus and sometimes it it is it seems to precede awareness, conscious awareness by the organism, at least. Right. And you know, of course, there's an interplay of these things, right? What what particular reaction you have may be the overlap of, you know, several different signals that tell you, oh, this is that kind of event, right? This is a, a this is a fear. This is an anticipatory fear rather than, a, oh, crap, I've got to flee that frightening creature kind of a scenario. Right. Um, But anyway, the basic point is at some level you're looking, when we look at hormones, hormones are easy for us to look at because it's a molecule and it's either present or it isn't present or it's present at some concentration that goes up or down. And so we can just measure them and we can also experimentally easily alter them, right? You can just add some to the system and see what it does. So they are, it's a very tractable set of systems. And as a result, we know a lot about what it does, but we don't necessarily have the logic nailed down. It's effectively like the ability to, you know, activate a circuit, right? If you had a machine that you didn't understand, right? And you, you know, took some piece of it and you electrified that piece and you, you know, you watched that, you know, some lever does that, right? It's not that 
you know, the thing that you triggered, the, the wire that you energized is about that thing necessarily. The point is that's the lever is downstream mm-hmm. of the thing that you activated and you may have activated a bunch of other things and you could have gone farther downstream. And so anyway, this all lines up with a, um, it is sufficient, but not necessary. If I activate something upstream and it activates 20 things downstream, but if I had gone another step downstream, it only would have activated four, then the point is sufficient, but not necessary because you can go downstream and do the other thing. So anyway, I guess, I guess the point is complex systems are tough, but the throw up your hands in response to them is not the right thing to do because basically there's a logic. They have to be built out of a kind of logic that with work can be unpacked. Yes. And uh, our attempts to reduce, to make linear, uh, because it's easier to file in our own heads, uh, our understanding of systems like this, well, if A, then B. You know, the logic of computer gates uh, sometimes would appear to be the logic of, say, synapses. Uh, but that does not mean that it's a, it's the logic of, say, uh, biofeedback endocrino- endocrinological systems, right? That you have basically those sorts of simple, you know, and or not gates uh, at one level, but that you have so many of those systems laid on top of one another, some of which are themselves not using such simple gates. They are, for instance, um, not binary, but actually gradated, you know, qualitative responses rather than quantitative responses. You end up with complexity uh, that cannot necessarily be perfectly understood with a simple linear model. Right. And part of that you know, you, you point to the uh, the discrete versus the continuous, and yeah. neurons make a great case for this because, in fact, in each it's neuron, both. <laughs> it's both. You've yeah. got the the axon end, which is discrete; it either fires the message or it doesn't. And you've got the cell body, which has all of these dendritic inputs, and there are so many inputs, and they you, you either, um, you know get enough inputs short enough packed in time in uh, closely enough together that you go above a threshold and then the axon sends its message or you don't so basically you know the so one message end- sent or not binary but within you know w- with within the cell body or no i guess the axonal end oh, it's been a while since i've done this but you know you you have to hit some limit um before the action potential actually in in the cell body and so and the thing is it does make this point about, you know, is the is the universe discrete or continuous, you know, yes. right? And <laughs> the answer is yes. The answer, the answer is yes. You get enough discrete inputs and it becomes effectively continuous. Um, anyway, I don't know whether that just lost everybody, but but the, the idea that, yes, these systems, I mean, if you have enough, you know, logic gates, you can model the behavior of a continuous system, right? You have to sort of overwhelm the amount of actual complexity in the system with with these on off kind of uh, bits but yeah. um, but anyway yes the, there have to be simple rules otherwise it would be impossible to get a complex creature uh, of the sort that we are 